What's up, guys? It's your boy Pat coming back at you with the next episode of the Hollow Down Cigar Lounge. New time guest on the show this time is my boy Derek. Hey. So, uh, like I told you before, just trying to bring in different friends, different pals, different people onto the show. So you're not only looking at my ugly face every time. Uh, first things first, before you wonder what the hell we're doing, um, outside. It is Louisiana. It is god awful hot. So you will see this sweat towel being used throughout this show, and there's nothing I can do about it unless you want to see us shined up, buttered up, glistened up like a freaking honey butter biscuit at Popeyes. I wish I'd have brought more beer. This yeah. is a terrible idea. <laughs> one each? What was I thinking? Mm. Well, okay. this uh, wannabe shade here is uh, deceiving. So, uh, so yeah, the getting that out of the way so you're, you're at some point i'm gonna have to use this towel i can't make it visual so I might as well just throw it out there and make it awkward because um it's 104 at the time of recording this a couple days ago it was 108 it, it's stupid we'll talk about heat wave more in a second but just wanted to throw that out there so uh anyway welcome to the show derek and hey, welcome to the hell hole it is <laughs> thanks um, for having me but i've lived here my whole life basically yeah i know, I know you know Y'all reference us talking about Louisiana before and Jesus. Jesus. It's hot. Jesus hasn't lived here since the 80s. <sighs> Devil came in and burned the place to the ground. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Ugh. so what are we smoking today? It's going to be Latitude Zero Signature. Mm -hmm. See if this will focus on the camera for us really quick. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't want to focus on anything. That's cool. Maybe. Okay, that's that's. We're gonna pretend it is. That's about as good as we're gonna get. Put a link in the description. Well, I used to do that. I can talk about it, but I can't put a link anymore because YouTube can't put any links to anything tobacco or alcohol related. Ah. But I can talk about it. I'll tell you what it is, and you are more than welcome to go find it. But I can put a picture in the video. It's about as far as they'll let me do. So, first things first is the cut in the light. This is a box pressed cigar. I will tell you a little bit about it in a second. So, cut wise, if you haven't smoked a box press, uh, you can pretty much cut it however you want to. This one has a pretty good cap. See, it goes down pretty good, so you should be able to do a V cut as long as you're good. Um, some people punch so you don't mess it up. You can guillotine straight cut, doesn't really matter. The only thing I would suggest is on a V cut, which is my preference, make sure it's got a good cap right there on a box press so you don't shred it off. It's my only opinion. So, I still don't know the difference. You could lie to me all you want, <laughs> but no, nothing wrong with that. Oh, guess what I learned since the last time we smoked? What's that? Absolutely nothing about cigars. <laughs> I try to do, look, I, I hit up some, some channels on YouTube. I don't know. A lot of these guys are doing the long form thing. It's, it's pretty cool if that's your thing. I mean, I like cigars. I right. don't have that much to talk about. I don't want to hear somebody talk about it for that long. Three and a half hours is too long. I can't, I can't do that. This, uh... Part of the reason I, when we built this series, it kind of hit that like 45 minute mark was because that's about where I was comfortable listening. Because that's a good song. I can sit out and smoke one while I'm watching. Yeah. Go beyond that and I kind of start drifting. So, you know. And I'm going to be useless. <laughs> You're useless anyway. What's the difference? <laughs> anyway, um, no, so I've been smoking cigars for about 14 years. How long have you been smoking? Oh shit, I don't know. Probably not that long, but <laughs> so I'm less enthusiastic about it than you are. Right. And or less knowledgeable. I, I'm enthusiastic. I'm cigar nerdy. And there's people that still out nerd me, and that's fine. He just likes to smoke them. He don't really care. Like if it's got a good aroma and a good taste, that's it. And if so, this passes the test, I'll give it a yep. We're looking for a yep or a nope. <laughs> don't don't ask me for notes. So still gonna toast it. Um I have to be careful as hot as it is. That is catching fire quickly. Mm. 
I'm not going to say anything. So he does. Oh, you're waiting on me. <laughs> I don't want to ruin your first impression. I'm not expecting you to pull out, you know, pistachios and sweet buttercream or anything like that, but, you know. Well, that's funny because that's what I'm getting. Is that. You're supposed to have the notes pulled up, damn it. I did, and I hit back. <laughs> I was told the answers to the quiz would be given. <laughs> so. Let me read what uh, Cigars International has to say about this. This is, uh, again, the Latitude Zero Signature. Alright, so, as always, read everything from Cigars International, and they like to give you a story if they know it. I'm not going to read you the story. Um, I'll tell you, it's a Nicaraguan origin of a cigar. The wrapper includes a uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra, but what you can experience in this is a comprehensive blend, a variety um, variety of flavors on the tongue. The inside consists of fillers that are Dominican Habano, Connecticut Broadleaf, and the Nicaraguan Habano encased again in a Nicaraguan binder. It's got a little speckle of Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper on the outside that gives it a masterpiece of a blend. So they don't actually talk about too much as far as flavor notes and not all cigars have intense flavor notes. Some of them are just good flavorful tobacco, you know, and um, it seems to be like one of those for me. Sometimes yep. I can taste you know, that coffee or the leathery taste or whatever. This one, it literally tastes like a pretty damn good cigar. Huh? Literally just the back one. That's perfectly okay. No complaints? No. You know, some people swear that if it doesn't have a flavor and you can't smell, smell or taste an aroma of espresso, that it's a crap cigar. That's not the case. I'm down with this. All mine tastes like rum. You do like your rum and few cigars, though. And he's introduced me to a couple that are pretty dang good. That I probably wouldn't have tried before. And I'd love rum and bourbon. You know, I usually drink that when it's not 100 and hell degrees outside. Mm -hmm. With the beer flavored cigars. I don't know, oh, guys. Get on it. There's a market. There is. I'm about to say, I don't, know if I've, I don't know if I've heard of them. I don't actually know if I've heard of a beer flavored cigar outside of somebody doing it on their own. Well, hold on. A cigar flavored beer could be a thing. Look, dude, I sold beer for the on premise market in South Louisiana for a long time. <laughs> Craft beer went crazy. I, I think I had one guy refer to one as a Swahili duck fat IPA. Swahili uh, duck fat IPA. Yeah, not a real thing, but somebody would buy it. You know. Label it appropriately. Swahili. So anyway, um, since I'm sitting here, you know, trying not to completely cover myself in a towel, um, talked about that heat wave, right? So right before I saw this recording, 104 degrees, a couple days goes 108, and we're not talking about heat index, we're talking about true measured temperature. Mm -hmm. The Louisiana record, I had to look this up, is 114 degrees, true temp, that was August... 10th of 1936 in plain dealing right up the road, right up the road from where we are um, we are in the northwest corner and that is uh, registered as the hottest portion of the state as well we're not far from that so um, they are predicting we may very well beat our record this year in temperature we haven't yet but they're, they're thinking we might so oh boy hmm <laughs> got to be number one at something other than crime. We got that. <laughs> In the bag. <laughs> when we're not number one, we're right behind him. So, uh, it's a whole other show right there. We yeah. could make a whole show out of that. We reference it a lot. I'm <laughs> <laughs> In the same show. Reasons I'm, Reasons I'm leaving Louisiana and why I'm still here. We could al <laughs> alphabetize it too. Could. It would be an episode. The Ooh. would be an episode. Uh oh, I think I'm having some problems here. So, 
You may have to puff on it a little bit quicker than you want. Just because it's so dang hot, it's going to try to burn quick. And not, not much you can do about that one, so... Um, you know... You want to puff low and slow, but it doesn't help it when the temperature's trying to catch it on fire for oh, you. The atmosphere's trying to kill me. You need to get out Dude. of here. <laughs> anyway, so... First things first. I guess it's not first things first, but... First things past the long introduction introduction about the heat and the cigar. <laughs> we're gonna bitch about um, this the whole time. We're gonna bitch about the heat the whole time. Sorry. <laughs> apologize. It is what it is. So, um, we've been trying to get together for a few weeks trying to avoid having to record in this heat. Um, I just moved. I don't have a studio space that's AC'd. Hopefully that's coming down the line, but uh, it's been hot as hell since the move, so just had to suck it up and do it, so it is what it is. I guess that's uh, going to be the repetitive bitch mark for the day. No. But, stuff that y'all want to hear about is the giveaway. So I've got two bits of really cool news today. Uh, the first one is the giveaway. I mentioned it two episodes back. Of course, the, bat, the last episode was just me. It was an EDC uh, episode. It's Everyday Cigar. Uh-huh. That's so, what you did there. Those are the ones that I um, do by myself, uh, specific topics. So the show before that, we referenced the giveaway. We hit 200 members on the Facebook group, the Hollow Down Cigar Lounge Facebook group, that if you're not in, you should be. Uh, the other one is 300 subscribers on the YouTube channel, which is where this video posts first. So if you're subscribing, You'll see this video before I put it on Facebook and before it pops up on the audio podcast as well. Basically, you'll see it first. So, had to hit those milestones, but to enter the giveaway, you had to be a member of both, and all you had to do to enter was send me an email telling me what your favorite cigar was. And I said, if you didn't have a favorite cigar, send me a cigar that you are curious about. Because we're, we're going to use those and potentially talk about and review cigars later that you have mentioned. So, you're giving us some feedback and some information. But the giveaway was for the five, or the core five color pack from Camacho. So these are all Robustos, a five by 50-ish. Try to remember the exact ring gauge on these, but I think that's about appropriate, 50 or 52. So it includes one of each of their triple Maduro, the Ecuador Robusto, the Corojo Robusto, the Connecticut, and the Criollo. Never say that right, but... So there are five different blends. I personally like all of them. Full disclosure, not sponsored by Camacho. This is being provided by the channel. This was given to me for this purpose. So... Um, if you're a member of the group, you see me smoke some of these. I post pictures just like the rest of y'all do in the group. Um, but this was the giveaway. So right before the show, did what I told you I would do is I checked to see everybody that entered. If you were members of YouTube and Facebook, drew a name out of the hat. Wish I'd have thought ahead of time to wait and do that on the recording. I wasn't that smart. I'll do that next time. So, uh, at least it's a little bit more spur of the moment, but, uh, <laughs> more of a surprise, more of a surprise, <laughs> need authenticity, right? Real. So, but I had in my head cause the last time I said, Hey, the last thing I'm going to do is draw right before I record. So that's been stuck in my head. That's what I did. So I apologize for not making it a show and doing it here. However, um, won't say last names, but Martin, these are yours, buddy. Um, I will send you a message if you don't beat me to it the moment I post this because I'll tag you in it Because guess what you had to be a member of the group to join the giveaway Which means I can tag you in the group because you're there. So as soon as I post this uh, your name will be there. So We'll link up. I'll uh, get you shipping details and uh, whole age verification for online purposes for legality and uh, we'll rock on so yes yeah gotta be safe and legal um 
we're not going to have an issue. Um, it's just got to do some checks. So anyway, this is yours. Send these to you and uh, hopefully you'll tell me what you think about them when you smoke them. Um, you may have had some of them before. That's cool. Either way, let me know what you think. And uh, thank you for being here for part of the channel. So we're going to do giveaways from time to time. We'll have, um, you know, some stuff that I'm given, some stuff that I fun. I may do some of our channel merch. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down here as well. Uh, got merch for Hollowdown. It's kind of cool. It's nerdy. I don't care about profit. So the, most of the prices are going to the production crew. So... You have a production crew? Well, I don't have a production crew, but I kind of have a third party production crew. Oh, okay. Ooh. Fancy, fancy. Mysterious. But, um, most of that, most of those prices go to them for the actual show. I think they're marked up, like, each item's marked up a couple bucks, mostly just to cover the transaction, the fees that I have to do on the sale part. So, um, I just think it's cool. I think, um, Kate or Johnny Bravo at one point mentioned doing merch and thought it was silly and like it's a podcast and then I did it and started getting asking asked about merch and I was like well you know why not why not so uh what a yeah, funny anyway. saying somebody will buy it somebody will buy it what a curse word if Everybody you buy any of the merch take a picture of it put it in the group let us all see it um you put the F word on I'll buy it I have it but I uh, I could. I can come up with something. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Like, there's a shirt, like, Johnny's uh, slogan is always, whether you like it or not, we'll still be here. Well, we'll still be here is on a shirt. Because he joked and told me to do it, so I did it. So, anyway. 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 Anyway, anyway. Giveaway's done. Uh, this is the first one. I said, if you're watching Five Pack Martin, that'll be coming to you. I'll get with you on that. And uh, periodically we'll do stuff. So I have no set schedule for giveaways or anything like that. It's when we hit a certain milestone or it's a certain date of the year or it's a random Tuesday and woke up. I, I don't know. We'll have excuses to do giveaways. Because I'll, we're alive still. We're alive. We're, we're breathing. We're happy. We're smoking cigars. It's a good day. Mm -hmm. I try to smoke a cigar every day. It doesn't happen because weather, life, and, you know, sleep deprivation sometimes will get you, but I'll try. Or the wife. Not your wife. My wife. <laughs> not going to tell you what she does, but your wife is a busy bee. Yeah. No shit. Love her to death, but <laughs> Jesus, she is a busy woman. Yeah. In a very good way, but... She'll have her first weekend off this weekend. I don't... Sorry, I'm not available to do this again this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, because I'll be working this weekend, so it works out. Cool. Um, she ain't gonna know what to do with herself. Nope. <laughs> we almost had a full day off last week. Anyway. Anywho, moving on. Work sucks. Shit. Um, part of my next, uh, part of my next off weekend will be a half off weekend because I'll, part of that weekend I will be, uh, out of town for training on my job, so... Work's always getting in the way. Do tell. What kind? You need to shoot somebody? No. Um, you need to shoot somebody? So, they know I'm law enforcement. Um, but it is a... Uh, Sorry. No, no, it's fine. So, I, I, I'm not going to tell them where I work, but I'll tell them what I do. So, they know I'm law enforcement. We've talked about it. Uh, but I'm also a defensive tactics trainer and instructor for my department. And every two and a half to three years, I have to go get recertified. So, I'll literally... Go down south a little bit, spend a couple days doing defensive tactics all day, every day. Sounds fun though. Uh, it's a short version because it's a it's a refresher, but it's a it is a lot of fun. Uh, I wish I could stay for the whole week, but I don't need the whole week. I need the the refresher from my research, and so that's what I'm getting to do. But it's still gonna be fun. But don't you really need the whole week? Just an excuse to go shoot shit. I'd take a full week and then some if I was allowed. Well, the problem is I don't pay for it, so the people paying for it only give me what I have to have. Those are expensive. They are, that's why. I price one I, of those courses. And, and I get it. Time soon. I, I get why. So I'm not talking shit. I completely understand why. And, you know, there was a second part that I, st I still tried, which could make it happen. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun for a couple days. I love doing that stuff. 
Hmm, aren't we supposed to go to the range soon? I've been trying to get you out to the range. Dude, we need to go to the range. Yeah. I've got a, uh, I've got a 300 blackout that I need to zero the scope on. I bought it right before COVID. Ordered the scope right before COVID. And the next paycheck, I was buying ammo or was going to buy ammo. And then everything shut down. And by the time really it came fun. back, everything was too expensive. I said, mm -mm, nope. What a scary time. So it's no set ammo locked either. up. That weapon set up, set locked up for a couple years. And I now have uh, a few months ago, I finally got my hands on some training rounds to go zero everything. I just haven't had the chance to go do it. But I don't want to go do it by myself. I mean, I could. Not that I don't. can't, but it's always cool to go shoot with somebody. So. I haven't been in a few weeks, so. I might be rusty. Yeah, it's fine. Can't keep up with the, the trainer. I got a, I got a, I got one of my pistols I need to adjust the sights on anyway, so, you know what? Kill about 14 birds one stone. A bullet. Or a bullet. Whatever what rock are you throwing? Hey. Heavy ass rock. Rocket. 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 We'll kill Rocket. 14 birds. I never said it was propelling the rock. Here for the cheap jokes, folks. <laughs> Keep laying them out there. Who said you had to be a dad to have dad jokes? Every time. Foul ball. <sighs> anyway, um, we do need to do that. Yeah. For real. So, um, here's a segue. Something I'm going to start doing. Completely off the cuff, completely random, and even I don't even know what's going to be in this bit every show, but it's our disruption. There's going to be a lot more details on that, hopefully in the very next episode, and where that concept came from. And you're going to want to see that show, I promise you. Unless something falls through big time. Oh, well, now you said it. Hey, I'm a realist. You, you can't do that. You can't tempt the universe. <laughs> I, I have faith. I have faith. <laughs> you know, because of what it is and how it is, I have faith. But, you know... Always gotta have a way out, just in case. But no, uh, in the next episode I'll have some pretty good details on where this disruption is really coming from, its purpose, its intent, and uh, for me, and hopefully everybody else, the enjoyment of a few things. So you wanna make sure you come back the next show for sure. But the disruption bit is gonna be either some wacky news, some sudden news, some current news, a story. It may or may not be cigar related today. It is absolutely not cigar related by any means. Mm -hmm. um, no, can't even spin it. Can't even spin it. Um, not even with a good joke. I, nope. But anyway, it's not cigar related at all and that's okay. It's just going to be something random that sticks out that makes sense for nothing else in the show. No other place to put it. So we're going to disrupt the show a little bit with whatever. So, um, it is going to become a consistent bit on the show, except for my EDC shows, because those are obviously a little bit of a different mojo to those. I want to just sit here and puff on this thing, but I don't want to demolish it in like five minutes. I got no problem with that. It's hot enough to do that. It gets a Ooh. yep. Sure. It gets a yep. Yep. It's Hell yep. Yeah. yeah. So, ironically, these are actually um, very well priced cigars. Like five dollar to six dollar range here in the U.S. per stick. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I mean, they don't taste like that. No. <laughs> so, of course, I usually get things on bundle. Um, My five dollar ones aren't this good. So, in fact, uh. Yeah. I had this pulled up. Let me make sure I'm not tripping because I'm pretty sure that was uh, where I was at. But they $35. They definitely don't. Okay, seven. I was really close. Seven dollars a stick. Seven dollars a stick. And it's five by 54, not 52. Um, I, used to, I used to pay 15 bucks for a cigar because I didn't know any better. I thought you were supposed to spend at least $15. Now, thanks for setting me straight. 
Oh no, I'm sorry. I this is the these are the Toro box press. They're six by fifty two, so it's fifty two. But um, but yeah, so seven dollars a cigar. Now, I've got a, a drawer in there of premium cigars that are that cost more. Um, could probably do a whole show on where I think the value to price point ends. I've got a few sticks in there that are $25, $30, and I would tell you they're worth $25, $30. I've also smoked some that are $35, $40 that should go in the trash can or worth $5. Yeah. And Diminishing time returns. Right, you know? I feel like my hair is about to fly away, so <laughs> it's like it's out of the hat. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is, is personal preference in your palate. Um, so I've been smoking about 14 years. In just the last couple years, I finally started to pull out like the chocolates and the espressos. All before I could be like, oh, it tastes like coffee-ish. Now I can start to pull it out. I still don't really understand what Earth is. <laughs> if you really want to know what we think as a show on Earth, go watch episode 5. Um, no, 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 no. 7. Because that was the New Year's episode where me and Johnny Bravo went up to Woot. You will see what we think of the Earth flavor. Please go watch that episode if you that haven't. One was, that one was funny. It's probably one of the funniest shows. And it's also the only show so far that we struggled to say anything about the cigar because we didn't want to trash it. That was the only one I watched. But uh, I didn't say that. No. We should go watch the I other one. I watched them all. Big go fan. Huge fan. <laughs> well, you don't have to. I guess you don't have to watch them all when I tell you about everything either. Yeah, that's true. I get the cliff notes. But five was Christmas, seven was New Year's Eve, and um, we haven't made it back up there yet. We want to, but uh, go watch, go watch episode seven, New Year's. It's a, it's a menacing show. So, anyway, good shit. But this is this is really good. So you're talking seven dollars a cigar, and I've I've got a bunch of cigars that um, in this range that are good. Like four to eight dollars is where I live eighty percent of the time. Fantastic. I mean that helps when I smoke a lot. It helps the budget too. Right. For now, you know, if I had if I had the money to smoke a Placencia every time I smoke, absolutely. But those are twenty five dollars cigars. That's not as bad as I thought. Better. No. The way you were describing it. Well, it's. There's, there's one blend, and I, I get them backwards. I'm not going to misspeak on air, but one of them is, is around like $29, $30. But my favorite cigar out of Placencia, period, is the Alma Fuerte. Fantastic. All of their Elm, Alma Day are good. All of their Year of series are good. They're, um, they do harvest-specific blends. So, like, they had 146, 149, which is literally their 146 harvest. 149th Harvest as a company. Um, I just saw a peak that they're about to come out with. I want to say it's a 151. If I'm wrong, correct me. But uh, I think it's 151. But th those are specific blends that uh, they do special. Those are great. But the um, the Alma series is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I have yet to have a cigar beat it for my palate, for my personal opinion. Including a couple high dollar cigars. No. Not saying it's not gonna, it can't happen, but so far it hasn't. Fantastic. I saw another big YouTuber review that one and spoke pretty highly of it. Absolutely. But again, diminishing returns though. That, right. That was his final critique on it. Like, it's good. I don't know if it's. That, that cigar, that quality, that price point is the top of where I feel that the value comes back. For everything that I've had, and there's. Um, there's a couple cigars that a couple guys in the group, um, specifically Chad, has talked about that I want to get my hands on a smoke because he said they might actually let my value point increase. But considering I haven't tried those yet, like the Atabay, I haven't tried that yet. Um, it's one he loves, and we seem to be on par with a lot of flavors, so I'm going to try it. I just haven't got it yet because my premium drawer is pretty full at the moment <laughs> I need to smoke some things <laughs> like I'm getting I'm getting some budget sticks in but like I need to smoke some of my premiums before I, I limit myself to one drawer of premium cigar so I don't overspend it's a budget controller is all it is everything else my big humidor my other drawers 
that's on my budget sticks. I'll get bundles, I'll get packs, I'll get deals like Cigar Bid and Cigar Page and Smoke In, Cigars Daily, like all those sites. I will get deals and fill up everything else, but my premium specific singles that I get, controlled to this drawer. So I don't under control my wallet. That whole piece sounded like a, a humble flex. <laughs> I guess it could be. I mean, I, was, I mean, come on. Did you think I was going to come on your show and not fuck with you a little bit? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, if, now, if we're talking real numbers, if we are going to do a humble flex, what is on my hand? Cool. Is uh, I probably have around. I could pull up the app, but uh, I won't because I've got. Uh, I use the box pressed app, so great if you have more than just a few cigars helps you keep track of everything you can rate them for yourself keep track of your price when you bought it where you bought it so you don't let anything get too old in your storage um, but I think I have around 4 15 420 cigars right now I've got one in a Tupperware nothing wrong with that and I'm gonna smoke it this weekend I'll you, have none in a Tupperware you get and smoke mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that I I'm an ager so you know, I now there's some cheap sticks that like your factory smokes and stuff like that. Like I'll get and smoke them right away. But my premiums or like my midlines, I'll get a box and I will put it back in that humidor and I won't touch it for a few months. So I kind of have this rotation system. So they're coming in, coming out. But that way, by the time I get to it, it's been the humidor. It's acclimated. It's kind of gotten used to the humidity here. It um, seems kind of flow a little bit better on the draw and the flavor to kind of gets used to your local humidity and there's it was all a lot which is a lot um ironically so my smaller humidor runs great on bovita packs my 70 liter struggles with just packs so like i've got a new um i think i got the humicare um basically a cigar oasis but humicare's version of it to water-based humidified but the packs have been just like <laughs> sucking up so what i've been doing when the humidity goes down let's open the door yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, inside the house i mean we're only sitting at like 95 percent every day yeah it's it's been it's been legitimately been flowing between 80 and 95 percent the last two months so inside the house with the ac doing its damn job it's still like 65 75 percent inside which your target is more like 35 percent interior humidity and we can't outside of a commercially sealed building it's it's hard to accomplish right now so can't pull it off with this equipment no so you know I've, when it gets uh when it's dried i literally open the door for a few hours let it humidify and then you know i mean it's not going to get higher than the room temperature in my house so it's not a crucial issue I like to keep the temp in there about 65 but 72 73 room temperature in the house is not gonna damage anything so obviously I went 10 years without a temperature controlled humidor it's fine but humidity sucks yeah but but yeah you know I I, I age that and there's there's different worlds of thought on how long you should age your cigar. Some people say three days, some people say three months. I just put it in the back and put it on the rotation. My minimum will be two weeks, but after that point, I don't care. If I get froggy one day and I'm like, screw my rotation, I'm gonna go grab one out of a box, put the box back, screw it. But I have these two big drawers that have the four common sizes, Gordos, Toros, Churchills, and Robustos. And I just have split there. When that particular size gets low, I'll pull out whatever box that's been aging and fill it back up and just rotate. So, yes. I have a lot of cigars, but it's somewhat of a system. Yep. That means good. Yep, means good. <laughs> yep, means good. You see, if you hear me say nope, it means I'm walking back to my car. All right. You can say nope in about 15 minutes. <laughs> we really that far in? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at your notes, I think we have a, a pretty good way to go, don't we? Mm -mm. No? Okay. I guess we gotta burn some time. No, um, burning time on the show is not easy, or it's not difficult. It's very easy. That one, yep. Yeah. So, but basically, um, I mean, we talked about the giveaway. We have continuously talked about the heat. 
Um, I am rather drenched. Yeah. And want, we're in the shade. You want to change shirts again? I really do. Probably as soon as I turn this off, I'm changing shirts again. I changed shirts right before we started recording because that was drenched just setting up. Black shirts. Yeah, I mean, what do you want to do? If I had the money, you know, Mike can set it up inside, you know. I may set up a corner of the garage, get like a swamp cooler or something like that. The problem is I can't have it run while I'm recording because of the fan. But if I can get it decent before we record, maybe better. Mm-hmm. Wintertime, this doesn't mean a thing. You can bundle up or put a fire on. Who cares? Winter feels like spring. Like a lighter version of summer here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got excited spring. We this last never winter. Had a spring. I was yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was actually excited this past year because we actually had like a week of winter. Mm-hmm. Got stupid cold. For like a week. Had one good storm. And then it went away and now all we have are the memories. Now we have the memories. <laughs> and I hope for this year. I mean, we're already predicted to have a really wet summer and fall. Maybe that will translate into a descending temperatures. We're gonna hope. That's all we can do. Hope and pray, my friends, for anti hellish weather. Good luck with that. So, you still liking the cigar? Yeah, I'm gonna like it till it's done. Hell yeah. Usually. I, uh, I usually go all the way to the nub as long as I can. I, that was not a dirty joke. That was not or a dirty joke. <laughs> I will limit myself, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, thank God I only brought one beer then, huh? Hey, it's always next time. You don't want me 12 beers in doing a podcast. It will not be the same kind of podcast you were hoping for. No. Demonetized. It's not monetized now, so we're okay. <laughs> Let's get it out. It's a wash. Do it anyway. So, uh, hey, maybe we'll increase your viewer count. Hey, you never know. Um, all jokes aside, uh, Wooten made some 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 good jokes and I said we we're going to get canceled, on. and um, <laughs> subscriber count went up. So, you know, we jumped. Interesting how that works. Yeah, and we and he made jokes. He's like, "Well, if you know this show gets canceled, it was my fault, and it went the opposite way." So, I mean, we're still young, we're still small, but the numbers, you know, it's interesting how things. So you owe work. him a letter. Maybe send him a pack of cigars. I, I actually have a, uh, a really good cutter. I need to get him. Woot, we need to get together. I still have something to give you. So uh, anyway, he's he's had a his business has been boosting. So which is a good problem. It's a very good problem to have. So um he he put on the show he's a general contractor and all he does is construction and man he's he's good at what he does which means he's busy it's one of those good problems of life you know you get you get good at what you do and you have to delegate and start almost limiting what you can take sometimes it's a good problem never been not yet i mean i i i get it because i've had you know just doing some business on my own small scale I've kind of seen that if you do quality work that can happen but I've never had the luxury of big scale you know fallout like you know those cases where you almost have to raise prices just to limit your clientele you know that's a good problem to have you know but when you're good at what you do you know? Jesus the bumps are coming back heat bumps <laughs> <laughs> Braille. Yeah. Derek gets hot and he don't need to read. read anyway. You got Braille in your arm telling you how hot it is. I do yeah. not need Braille. But in all seriousness though, seriousness though, uh, I think this next the next episode will explain a little bit better where the uh, disruption topic comes from. You're gonna wanna come back and listen and watch be some good stuff uh promise you promise you so maybe maybe it won't be so hot we may only get a one degree break but are you gonna do it in september 
I have no idea. Probably still be hot. Hit me up in February. I'll come back. I'll definitely hit you up in February. But I'm gonna hit you up before that. I mean, we can hang out before then, obviously. <laughs> We are getting there. Tell your wife when we don't hang out, man. He said February, dang it. Wait until February. She get her going. I'm trying to get her into cigars. She'll she'll take a puff on mine every now and then. I've noticed her try it. She likes the smell. She she, she hates that I smoke. But then again, she's kind of sparked my habit this year. I mean, I used to smoke like maybe two or three cigars a year. Right. She came back from a trip <laughs> overseas with. I don't know, a dozen or more. <laughs> it's like, here you go. I'm like, I thought you hate when I do this. I do. Well, thank you. Oh, she also, also introduced me to you, so. That's fair. I think that was one of the premises. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> smokes cigars. Like, you, you sure? <laughs> do I need a bad influence? Yes, enough. you do. I got enough of those. Or I had enough of those. You're my one in North Louisiana. <clears throat> my one bad influence. I'll Congrats, take it. Bud. I'll take it. I'll take it. I will take it. I'm gonna be an influence. Can't be picky on no type. No. But yeah. Um, no, nah, we'll. Um, the last couple months, the episodes have been kind of spaced out, but that's between moving. We had Jesus. I think I mentioned it on the EDC show of how horrible, like we had all these storms and power outages that trashed us. We over the course of what five weeks, I think we had. We had two. I don't know if you had two. We had three. Oh, shit. Sure. Um, the third one was not as drastic, but it still did some some damage. But between that and then just scheduling, um, it's been a thing. So, um, and I really don't want to do it by myself. I want to stick my own shows to the my own myself episodes to the EDC. I kind of want to stick to the trend of bringing people in and you know. Um, uh, trying to get Matt on. Matt wants to come and do one. Um, but, you know, our schedules aren't quite the same, so we'll get there eventually. Might be able to get both of y'all on here at the same time. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. So, rotate the faces that come through, so, you know. We can have two smart asses. Yeah, two smart asses. Ooh. Oh, with you and Matt together. Jesus Christ. That will be a fun show. That'll be good. But, yeah, we're well, trying to... So that's why you haven't seen us lately. It's been uh, just a scheduling issue. Been a um, whole lot of stuff going on. So I apologize for not being around. I'm trying to... I would like to do every two to three weeks, but, you know, life is what it is. So... Most of my smoke sessions have been right when I'm getting off at work. Not work overnight, so by the time I get off... 6 a.m. I come home and smoke cigar and crash. You're getting off when I'm getting on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got issues like that too. I'm a nice shifter. A couple of my friends are nice shifters, but a lot of them are not. So you know, it's just just is what it is, man. But I'm glad you came on. Yeah. So thanks for having me. It's uh, about that time to, to wind it down. I told you it goes by quick once you start talking. Hey, you did most of the talking. I, I generally do most of the talking, even when I'm not on a show. I have quips and complaints and really bad jokes. That'll carry a little ways. Hey, the um, sirens coming down the road, if y'all can hear that. The sounds of Shreveport. Sounds of Shreveport. Do not miss that, by the way. <clears throat> it's actually not too bad over here. Um, most of it's just that straight stretch going through which is great we live by the interstate so, <clears throat> all day every day ambulances and cop cars yep noise never stops no but more it's robberies like, got tired of that too yeah it's just it's not bad over here got a got into a good area so but uh so yeah man thanks for coming um show goes by quick once you start talking hope you come back for some more well yeah so uh thank y'all for tuning in and watching um, like I said Martin, I'll get with you on um, on your giveaway here, bud. I'll uh, get that to you, and uh, we'll do, continuously do some uh, different giveaways time to time. Um, whether they're given to me, whether I'm just 
sending it back out as a thank you, whatever. Uh, we'll do random things here and there. And like I said, come back for the next show. Got some pretty good news for you. Something I think that uh, hopefully y'all think is pretty cool too. Introduce you to uh, what's going on there. And uh, we will come sweat it out on the next episode probably. Yeah, yeah. The way it's probably going to be for the next few months. And, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, comment, subscribe. The whole rigmarole. Absolutely. Gotta tell, gotta tell them, man. So, if you, if you got this, you subscribed and you got that ding, thank you. If not, share it to somebody that you might think would be interested. Um, share it on Facebook. If you're not a member of the group, join the group. I'll have all those links down there in the show notes. So make sure you catch on that between the Facebook group, the YouTube channel, um, which obviously you you might be here watching it on the YouTube channel um, if you're seeing this. If you're seeing it elsewhere, still have the link um, for everything um, there as well. Got the merch, got some other cool stuff. So. Um, just share it, send it to your friends, let's grow. So, um, most of it, to be honest, I do the episode because I just like smoking cigars. I like talking about them. Um, gives me a chance to do a basic review on a cigar and then just kind of hang out with a friend and chit chat and then get to hang out with you guys. But a lot of it, um, Facebook group, I like building the community, talk, showing what we smoke, what we, what we like. <clears throat> just kind of a good community builder. It's kind of like a virtual lounge in a way. Which is why this is called the Hollowed Out Cigar Lounge and you're watching me on your screen. It's a virtual cigar lounge. You know that? Talked about before, the old cigar brotherhood, we call it friendship therapy. Freaking love it. So, um, like y'all are a part of that. So, thank y'all for watching. Uh, we will be back doing another one because we will always be here. At least as long as Lord willing we are allowed to. I don't know about always. <laughs> hey. That's a little presumptuous. Looking for the stars. Looking for the stars. But... <laughs> Either way, thank y'all for coming, and until next time, stay safe and hollow down. Later. All right. And cut. Yep. Ooh, look at the fuzz. Christ.